Well, good morning. How's my Christmas family this morning? I'm glad you're here. Good, cool weather kind of puts you a little bit more in the, the getting ready for the, in the spirit than it does when we uh, have those 80 degree days during Christmas here in Texas. So it is a little bit better. I found this for the guys. It says the four stages of life of men. He believes in Santa Claus. He doesn't believe in Santa Claus. He is Santa Claus. And he looks like Santa Claus. We got a lot to look forward to, guys. Nick, thank y'all. Uh, thank the band. This, uh, how many of you are here uh, uh, today that was able to attend the event we had last week? Oh, my goodness. That's great. You know, it was uh, our largest event that we've ever had here at the church. And you could tell the spirit of Christmas was in the air. Nick did a great job putting the music together. And Terry and a bunch of these volunteers taking care of the stuff out on the grounds. Ron Townley getting our lighting display. It was just a, a very powerful event. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure I see new faces here today. If you're a visitor here, welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. No, Christmas is an amazing time of the year for many people. There's so many things to do. So many things to do, so many things to plan, so many things to see. It can become overwhelming, as Nick mentioned a minute ago, with all the things going on. And one of the things is Christmas lights. Every year, people dig them out, or they buy the latest trend. You know, it's gone from the, what is it, the little sickle lights to icicles and everything else so every year there's a new type lighting that comes out and they decorate their trees and their homes with all these colorful lights and cheerful reminders you bet of the holiday season sounds like steve had a lot of work to do along with miss jean there. no none okay <laughs> miss jean does it all did you know that christmas lights actually started out just as candles simple candles these candles were attached to the tree using wax or pins. And the practice began in Germany during the 17th century. And over the next 200 or so years, it became an established practice in Germany and began to spread out into other countries of Eastern Europe. Think about that. Candles attached to Christmas trees. Uh, that's, a little, that's a little risky, isn't it? I think that's why we got over the lights because I imagine there were a few tree fires during that time or little fires that went on. And the practice was originally started in order to bring illumination to the ornaments that were placed on the tree. Instead of just having a dull tree, they wanted, to, they wanted to illuminate it so you could see all the many decorations they put on the tree. And the practice continued until around the 1900s when candle holders became popular. And people started to use them instead of wax or pins on their trees to hold the candles to the trees. The purpose, however, stayed the same. It was to illuminate and make those beautiful works of art that people go in depth on, Miss Jean and them, to uh, make those beautiful works of art, that's what they would call them, decorated the tree to become more visible. They wanted to make sure everything that they had put on the tree, that everybody would be able to see it so it wouldn't be in the dark. And that's kind of how this went on. And outdoor light displays, the ones that has us driving around every year to see the variety of Christmas lighting at homes, or even... Some of us go to visit specially designed light shows and displays with thousands and thousands of Christmas lights and bulbs. That was started in North America, the little drive through lighting thing. The idea, however, was catchy, and these beautiful displays quickly became a worldwide phenomenon for everyone to enjoy. So now we see Christmas drive throughs Christmas lights, more and more Christmas lights than ever before. And if you were to ask many people, would tell you that the Christmas lights and decorations helps them get into the Christmas spirit and brings joy and excitement into their lives. You know, it's a way to kick off Christmas. And some people start real early because they want that enjoyment in their life for a longer period of time. However, as pretty as Christmas lights are, they're no match for the Christmas light. There are some similarities, though, between the two. They both draw attention, amen? Lighted neighborhoods. And businesses draw large crowds during the holidays every year. From the smallest di display to the grandest, it all draws our attention. It, it, it's something we're going to pay attention to or we're going to look at. 
And the light of Christ draws attention also. Even though some of it's negative attention from non-Christian complainers, there's no escaping it. The light of Christ gets noticed no matter what during this season. Another similarity is both bring enjoyment. Seeing the lighted Christmas trees in our living rooms or brings us, you know, that can bring us a feeling of happiness and warmth. That's kind of why we put the tree up each year. It brings pleasure to see a well-done display, doesn't it, Miss Jean? There you go. If you've ever seen Miss Jean's tree, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It takes hours and hours for her to do her tree. And it's just one of those things we look forward to during the holiday seasons is the tree. Now, Terry and I, we have a little bit different tree because we're not big uh, at spending that much time like Miss Jean then would. We have what they call a Charlie Brown tree. It's no leaves on it at all. It's just limbs with little bulbs. So, <laughs> And it works for us. Snaps together, plug in, you're good, right? So, <laughs> How many of you remember the aluminum Christmas trees? Yeah, some of these younger kids going, what? Yeah, that's right. You had, to have a, you had to have a deal that turned and changed the light on the aluminum Christmas tree. That prevented fires. That was the big push of aluminum Christmas trees at the time. You know, the light of Christ is no different. It brings joy and it brings pleasure. When the light of Christ fills us up, it removes the darkness from our lives and brings a warm happiness into our lives with it. The light of Christ. And the thing is, when we seek just regular lighting, regular Christmas lights, they bring us joy. But if you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and he fills you with his light, that's a light that will never go out. Most Christmas lights and the light of Christ didn't illuminate. They both shine. Both pierce the, dark, pierce the darkness. But none of the similarities are equal in their ability. The light's ability. Christmas lights will always fall short of being able to do what the light of Christmas, Christ does. Always fall short. Even if every inch of our homes, like the Griswolds here, is covered with lights, it can't come close to the glowing bright light that comes from the light of Jesus Christ. No matter how many lights you put out, you'll never overcome the light of Christ. And there are many things that Christmas lights just cannot do that the light of Christ can Christmas lights seem to last only for a season. And I'm going to say it this way. Normal people's Christmas lights typically go off or come down around the beginning of the new year. Normal people's Christmas lights. Sometimes people just want to enjoy Christmas lights all year long. Amen? Might be your neighbor. Don't look at them there if they're sitting by you. you know. But the light of Christ, it burns bright. All year long. Through his people. Through his people that continue to shine. His bright light through them to others. So that light never goes out. Christmas lights can and do. They fade over time. But the light of Christ within them. Should never fade. It should increase. Amen. In John chapter 8 verse 12. We're going to start there off this morning. We don't have a lot of scripture, but we have a little bit to look at. So if you want to join me there, open your Bibles. John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus says... I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, will have the light of life. Amen. As Christians, believing Christians, that we now have the spirit of Christ living in us, we have the ability not only to reflect the Lord's glory, but to have it increase in us and around us. We have the ability to be the light for Jesus Christ in so many ways, in our words, in the way we speak, in the way we act. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 14, my favorite piece of scripture throughout the whole Bible. Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, 
Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Your light. You go, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You know, you're a reflection of Jesus Christ. When you come to Christ, Christ fills you with the Holy Spirit and changes what's on the inside. You're still going to be the same on the outside, you know, but you start to change things, especially on the inside. You, you see things differently than you've seen them in the past. Actually, we start to see things as better than worse, unless you're oversaved. If you're a little oversaved, then you might see negative in some people because there are people like that that are holier than thou, right? You ever met anybody that way? We have to be careful because those kind of people are the people that drive people away from Christ instead of drawing them to Christ, amen? But your light should reflect out to everybody else. You should walk around like, man, I got this giant spotlight on my chest and it's Jesus Christ just beaming out to everybody. Like a smile or a good word. I always say my wife, she's like a bug light. She draws everybody to her. She's just that way. And sometimes she'll zap them. You got to be careful, you know. So. But you know, we should be that light. We should be that exciting throughout the year. It shouldn't just be during the season. Christmas lights are temporary. But the light of Christ is eternal, according to the Bible. Christmas lights are only for a season. But the light of Christ is ever-present in our lives. Christmas lights break, and they go out, and they need to be replaced. But the light of Christ is indestructible. His light will never go out. And Christmas lights are created. They're made by man. They're made by man. you got to think about that. But the light of Christ is something that was made because was it was made because it has always been. It wasn't made by man. It was there from the beginning. Christ was. So it wasn't man-made. You know, some people say, hey, you know, the stories in the Bible are just that. They're stories in the Bible. They were made up. The Bible is just a book. No, it's not. It's 66 books written by 40 different men over a period of time. And the Bible is the number one selling book ever. Ever. Is that an accident or is it just a book? Is it just stories? No. It's the truth. It's the inspired word of God. So we should believe in that. And we should believe that, that Christ's light was the beginning. Remember what God said when he made earth. Let there be light. John chapter 1 verse 1. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Darkness will never overcome the light of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about in heaven, and I'm talking about in this world. You know, God always brings evil into light. Always. You know, it, it, some people just say, hey, you know, I'm sitting in a dark place today. Well, you choose to sit in a dark place today. Because the light of Jesus Christ can intervene and change that darkness into light. The light has existed forever. But it wasn't seen up close and personal until Jesus came into the world. Do we realize that? The light that the, the, the wise men followed, the shining star, was a reflection of hope for many. The birth of Jesus Christ and his light shining through our world has brought hope to many. And I think during this time of season that we get into the spirit and we get into celebration that we should reflect back exactly when we see these lights on these trees or we see these Christmas lights lit up, it should bring Jesus Christ to our mind immediately. Amen? You know, it's tough sometimes to get into the Spirit. I've, had, I've struggled with that this year. I don't, I'm, not, I'm human just like the rest of you. 
I've struggled with getting in the spirit of Christmas. So many things have changed in my family and in the world. And if I focus on that, then I'll never get in the spirit of Christmas. So I have to focus on Jesus Christ to change all that. And that's what each and every one of us do. It, it, if your focus is right and your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then all the material things and all the other things in your life, it's not important. Bring Jesus first, everything else will fall into place. I keep tell, being told that over and over again. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light of mankind. Christmas lights, they may be artificial lights, but the light of Christ is real. It's not artificial at all. His word and his promise are buried in our minds and hearts. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. Anything man-made is considered artificial light or an artificial light source. Anything man-made. In John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 2, 8, Jesus is called the true light. Let's look at that together. We'll look at John chapter 1, verse 9 first. Just kind of want to back up what I'm telling you here. John chapter 1, verse 9. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Now skip to John, 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 8. A little bit further back over in your Bible. First John chapter 2, verse 8. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. So we know Jesus is the true light in this world. There's also false light. Did you know that? There's also false light that we need to be aware of. And that false light is Satan himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 14. Just keep flipping back over in the back of your Bible just a little bit further. Second Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 14. It says, For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, it is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end, will be, their end will be what their actions deserve. So we're explained in the Bible that Satan can come to us trying to be the true light or trying to persuade us that he is the light. And Satan can be tricky. He can make things look like they are right and true when they're not. He can appear as if he's the provider of light. He can present himself in a certain way that appeals to us and draws us in before we know what's going on. So we have to be careful. Satan brings to us a false light. It can be pretty, but it can be devastating in our lives. And Satan can blind our eyes so that we make darkness something to love and light something to hate. Satan can lead people to cherish the darkness. And the reason for that is, is they can do all their evil deeds under the cover of darkness. So Satan makes, makes it where it's just simple. Just follow me. I'll lead you on a path that's easier than this one for Jesus Christ. I'll make it simple for you. It's not complicated at all. Go ahead and do those things. Even though God contradicts what I'm telling you to do, go ahead and do them. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You have free will. You have a choice in your life which light to follow. It's your choice. I'd say choose wisely because a mistake's not worth it. Satan is deceiving. Let us be careful of which light we are following today. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, there are ferocious wolves. Satan will deceive us. He has bright lights. Go to any of these bars and clubs downtown. downtown. In Big Dallas, Fort Worth area. Go to these bars and clubs. They got bright lights flashing and drawing you in. 
I don't think that's Christ's way. I think that's more or less going to be Satan's way. Amen? You know, as we enjoy all the Christmas lights of the season this year, let's be aware of the lights we are enjoying. Make sure they're the right ones. Be sure that the light that brings us such joy and warmth is from the light of Christ, not false light from evil. Make that determination. Christmas is a time of enjoyment, and all the lights and decorations that come with it were created by man in which we can enjoy and should. But let us not forget that there's only one true light, and that light is the light of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to mention something here as we close. I've had this asked to me several times, and and I don't know how other people feel about it. I don't know how other people react, but I know exactly what we're going to do here. They've asked me, are we going to have church next Sunday morning here at JBRC? I'm going, duh. Right? Why would we not have church on Christmas morning? If we choose to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on the 25th of December and it falls on Sunday morning, we need to be here more than ever. Amen? I would not see it any other way. But there are some that don't. Their church is putting it out there right now saying, hey, y'all just need to spend time with your family on Sunday morning. You know, we're not going to do church. We're not going to have a candlelight. We're going to do both. We're going to have our candlelight Saturday night, and we'll be here Sunday morning. And it's okay. If you want to spend time with your kids on Sunday morning, it's okay. Do that. Get up early and open them presents and bring them kids to church so they'll know what Christmas is about. Amen? Be the example. Be the light of Christ for your kids, your grandkids, your family and friends, and everyone around you. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this day to you, Father. We're just so thankful for this beautiful weather today. Father, we're thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you just pour out on us. And Father, we are so thankful that you sent your one and only son to be born. To be born for us. Father, that you cared enough about us that you sent a savior. So Father, we are thankful and humble for that. Father, I pray that this season would be an enjoyment for everyone, that it would not be a burden because we know the birth of your son was not created for people to be burdened by it. So, Father, I pray today that everyone that will cease Christmas as a burden would set that aside, put their focus on you and understand all the love and, that you have for us and how much you do for us and you're willing to do for us if we just call on you. Father, I pray for safety for all. I, I pray for blessings on everyone here that hears my voice this morning. Father, we love you and praise you. We pray that everything we said and did here this morning was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.